Hello and welcome to uh, another edition of Cracking Cryptic where today actually we're going to crack the Super Bean dish. Uh, this is last Wednesday's from the Times um, and I thought we'd do another of these just because we had a very interesting comment on the last uh, Sudoku puzzle that we solved on these vlogs from Tom Collier. Um, Tom, as some of you may know, is one of the UK's very best Sudoku solvers. I mean, he's a multiple winner of the Times Sudoku Championship. He's represented the UK many times in the World Sudoku Championship and performed there with distinction. I mean, he, he is a solver of the very top class um, in world terms. And he was making the comment that he, he didn't really like Tom Snyder's uh, notation, which is the one that we sort of recommended last time in these videos. And just to remind you, so Tom Thomas Snyder, who is a former world Sudoku champion, um, he recommends that within each 3 by 3 box you only write notation if a number can be limited to two cells within that three by three box and then you write a, you know a little three in in both of those boxes just to remind yourself of that fact um, now Tom Collier thinks especially on these more difficult puzzles that that um, reduces your chances of spotting you know hidden triples or any of the other really complicated um, sequences of numbers that you might need to recall in order to crack them so I thought we'd have a go at this puzzle. We'll, we'll, we'll keep to the Tom Snyder method, but we'll try and work out whether uh, different sorts of notation might have helped us as we go along. And I'd certainly love for um, um, the expert solvers who watch, watch this vlog to, to comment on you know, how their, their notation might have differed and how it might have helped more. Um, but I'm going to pause the video quickly and just fill in you know, the, the very obvious cells so we get a grid with some notation in it okay one of the um, interesting things that I've noticed here is that um, as I was doing the Tom Snyder no notation there was a one and a one in this um, uh, in the central uh, columns here. So in column 4 and column 6 you can see that we already have a 1 which fixes in column 5 the 1 in this bottom set of 3 cells here. And I noticed we also had a 2 which we got here and this 2 in the middle box which forced a 2 into these same 3 cells. But the interesting thing about these three cells is, using Thomas Snyder's no notation, you, you're not allowed to write in um, you know, anything regarding that 1 and 2, because you have no 1 and 2 in this box, this 3x3 three three box, and or this 3x3 three three box over here. So you simply have to, I suppose, make, make a mental note that... Um, that the one and, and the a one and a two are going to appear in these three cells. Now, as it happens, this puzzle is um, is quite nice because it the five and eight were locked into position by Tom Snyder's notation, and because I've remembered that I need a one and a two in these two positions, um, I can actually now do that. Now of course I would have achieved the same result by cycling through the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and just performing Tom Snyder's notation, notation again. But this certainly uh, was a shortcut to finding um, to finding this uh, I suppose this feature of the 3x3 three three box which is likely to be helpful. Um, so let's just fill that in like that. And you can see also here that I've actually used um, used another form of notation or shorthand in the central box here. Um, so David McNeil's notation is to only write in notation at all if one cell in the grid can only contain two numbers. And if that's the case, he writes those two numbers in. Now I've actually done that in this this central cell, which isn't strictly in accordance with Tom Snyder's not notation, but I think it's pretty obvious when you look at this three by three box that these three numbers, 
you know are forced um, and using a sort of hybrid of Tom Snyder and David McNeil's notation allows me to see that the force numbers are four five nine just as a glance um, um, so that's that's just an idiosyncrasy that that, that I use and now uh, you can actually if we look at column two you can see how um, these ones here, this one two thing is, is going to be helpful. Because in column two, the one the one is going to be fixed in the top row. And that means I think that the one here is going to be forced. So the one's going to be forced to be in either of these positions. And let's look at that bottom row because it's very full. One, two, and six missing. Okay, so this is forced to be a 2. Let's fill that in. That means that we can fill that in as a 2, that in as a 1, this is a 1. Um, okay, that looks very good. Now this must be a 2. Uh, made very good progress there. So we're looking to place a 6, 9 here. So that's a 6. And this is a 9. I'm just going to fill in the notational consequences of that. One of the, I suppose, the slightly annoying things about these sorts of puzzles now, once you reach this point, so you've done a, you've done a couple of clever things, and we've filled in a lot of numbers. Is you can see how many rows and columns there are with five or six numbers in them, and so we probably know we're looking for a hidden single. Um, and it's a case of trying to find that hidden single as quickly as possible. And by hidden single, I mean you, you know, um, it's going to be um, if there was a row with six numbers in it, then in those three sp in the three spaces, there's going to be two of the numbers eliminated by by the crossing row or column, and it's just a case of finding it. So here, I mean, I think one of the things I would note is that I b I feel like I've filled in a lot of you know sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. So I'd be looking for a row or column without any of those things in it that was fairly complete to try and use that. So column, oh sorry, row two looks like a good good opportunity to do that. So let's have a look. We need a two, six, eight, nine for this 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 row. So you can see here this can only be an eight or a nine. This cell. Now David McNeil would be able to write in eight nine as notation here, but Tom Snyder's method doesn't allow us to do that so we could try and keep a mental note of that um, so let's have a look at this similarly here this is a six nine cell but again I can't I can't record it two six eight no that one's got three possibilities ah no so here we go this is this is our hidden well at least the first of our hidden singles so you can see this can only be a six so let's fill that in that forces that to be a six um, I thought this cell could only be a choice of a 6 or a 9. Yeah, so this is now a 9, forced. And um, what's this going to be then? Two, 2 or 8. So this must be an 8. And that must be a 2. So that, well, that was very helpful. So let's fill in the notational consequences of that. Now we can see that the central column, this is now forced to be a 9. Which means this must be 4, 8 in some combination. Oh, no, no, not 4, 8, sorry. 4, 5 in some combination. But actually, this 9 at the top here means that this is forced to be a 9, this is forced to be a 4, this is forced to be a 4. It looks like the puzzle's falling apart now with us finding that hidden single, doesn't it? It looks like it's really um, starting to collapse. And again here, I think there's probably any number of ways to finish this from this point, but uh, looking at this column, column, uh, column 2, we need to put in a 3, 4, 9, and you can see immediately this cell that I've highlighted, that, that can only be a 3. Um, which means this is a 4 and this is a 9. And therefore, this is a nine, and I think the puzzle's now broken. I think it's going to uh, just collapse. And, um, so I'll I'll do that. If if there is any sort of late stage X thing or something, we can stop and um, discuss it. But 
certainly I think I think Tom Snyder's method held its own there um, it may be required a little bit more than that I had to, I had to keep track of that one and two in order to solve it quickly um, uh, Tom's method would still have got that out um, but I wonder whether um, Tom Collier's method now might have might have found a better way of recording that and that that so he would never have to really um, use use his mental recall um, to find that one two combination in this in this cell in these two cells down here um, anyway be love to hear from any of the expert solvers out there on in terms of um, whether this is interesting um, and their feelings on it and whether their notation would have been more successful and we'll do another of these soon thanks very much for watching